Welcome back to another Build Day Live video here at NetApp in Boulder in Colorado. I'm Alistair Cook and joining me on this exciting unboxing video is Raphael Sider. Raphael, what do you do with NetApp? I'm, uh, I am principal architect, part of the uh, CIBO team. Right, and what have we got in front of us in the big cardboard box? Uh, we have a new model of uh, computer storage nodes, we'll find out. There's 615 uh, that we just released a few weeks back. All right, well let's, let's get straight into it. Opening up the box, it's a nice usual, a lot of empty space in the top. This can't be a very big unit. If you want to throw that one away that side. Yeah. And more plastic, foam. So it's, it's going to survive travel fairly well. Absolutely. And then, let me help you. There we go. Oh. This is my weights for the day, a bit of resistance training. And then if we rotate it around, we can show the front to the lovely people at home. There we go. So this is a one new enclosure. This is really small, really compact. Um, have you previously used one new enclosures for the hyperconverged pr product? Um, so the answer is uh, um, no. We have used um, previously for solid fire product, but not specifically for HCI. So this, right. is the, this is the first generation where we have introduced uh, uh, full width one U nodes. Right, and so we've got at the front uh, drive base, Usual sort of story, story, two and a half inch drive bays that will be all flash if these are storage nodes and will be empty if they compute, if I remember rightly. Correct. Correct. So we got 12, uh, 12 slots that we can populate with different, uh, with the different drives on the, on the front, or if this is going to be a compute node, they would be, they would be empty. And in this case, what we have is This we is do the first time we've got it out of the box. We do have uh, a storage node, and how we can tell is uh, through the network on the back end. So let me lift it up and turn it around so we can see that network. And so what's different about the network on the storage nodes? So on the, on the storage nodes, we, uh, they come with um, two 10 slash 25 gig connections for the iSCSI connectivity. We also have two one gigi uh, that are used for in-band, as well we have an additional port for out-of-band connectivity. So the remote management out-of-band as well as the uh, operating system direct management in one gig and then 10 gig for the actual storage traffic. Exactly. Right, and this is just a single node in a one U enclosure, very much the pizza box style. Exactly. And this could equally, as you say, the only thing that's differentiating that we can see from the outside is the network connectivity is different on the, co the compute nodes to the storage nodes. Correct. But otherwise it's the same enclosure, it's just a different expansion card. Exactly. Right. Well, that's nice and cool. And then we also have the other, let me bring over the other fellow, which is the 2U four node enclosure. So I'll swing them both around so we're seeing the front of both of them. Sure. And so this is what I'm more used to seeing in, in this kind of platform is 4 and 2U um, divided up drive base at the front, very much like uh, a lot of the appliances that are the scale out that we see. Correct. So this is a, a, a chassis and inside this chassis we can populate this chassis with uh, either compute or storage nodes. So it's got four bays. Uh, those bays could be populated with, uh, you know, the uh, specific nodes that are applicable for your workload. So what have we got in here? Because we did actually have some to take a look at. What have we got in this one, Rafael? So this would be looking on the back end. Uh, this would be a storage a storage node, and how I can tell is we have uh, NVRAM. So this NVRAM is critical for um, sending the IOs. We don't send the IOs to the SSDs. We send the IOs directly to the NVRAM. And from this NVRAM, we offload this to the, to the drives that will be populated on the front uh, with uh, the actual data. And so it's on ingest to this NVRAM that all of the data efficiency, the dedupe and compress happens 
and then, as I recall, there's a mirroring to a second storage node before data is acknowledged back. Correct. So, so actually, all of the um, slide services, as we call, would happen before the data get, gets uh, committed into our NVRAM. Um, and you're absolutely right. We would mirror this data on two different nodes, uh, storage nodes, and then we would send the acknowledgement back to the, to the host that we got this data protected. And then everything else in here is just a, a very standard dual socket x86 server. Um, f fairly lightly populated on memory. I guess the memory demands for running the, the storage platform are usually significantly below the memory demands for running the virtualization platform. Correct. So, so CPU on the storage node is going to be exactly the same on those uh, 410S nodes. So those are the 410S nodes. And the CPU is going to be exactly the same, but the memory is going to vary depending on the drive size. So the bigger the drive sizes you have, the more physical RAM you're going to have. And that's primarily around the larger volume of metadata that's required in order to, to handle that larger volume of data at rest. Absolutely. And then we have a compute node in here as well. This one looks like a compute node. What have we got in here that's different from our storage node? Yeah, so... Um, Looking from the outside, obviously, we're missing the NVRAM, right? We don't need the NVRAM it's on the compute nodes. The storage player. Yeah, and we have extra NIC card. Um, that extra NIC card um, is specifically beneficial for our uh, vSphere environment. Yeah, no, I might want to dedicate 10 gig NICs out for my storage in some use cases and, and have the others for all of my virtual machine traffic. Or Absolutely. I might be just mixing them together. And then I'm imagining that you're seeing customers deploying the compute nodes with a lot more memory than you would put into the storage nodes. Correct. And more CPUs as well, just to match their workload. Yes, yes. So this specific uh, node, which is the uh, 410C, we got um, various different uh, configuration options from small core count to the very high core count. And same thing uh, on the memory, depending on the workload that you're trying to uh, run. Um, it could start you know, fairly small and uh, grow up to a terabyte. And I guess that uh, this that satisfies a, a large number of use cases. And I imagine I could put a, a low power GPU into here as well, since there's a PCI Express slot available. But that then is, is what's driving us to go to this one U form factor, for, particularly for compute nodes. I imagine there's more capability for additional RAM and additional expansion cards in the one U enclosure. Yes, correct. So this is this is a new uh, new node six fifteen C. We got about uh, 13 different uh, configuration options on this node. It starts again with the um, <clears throat> four core count that could be very um, helpful for databases to um, high uh, core count where we have, let's say, 22 cores. And that's that's really beneficial for applications like VDI, VDI where, yeah. where you want to have a lot of core, right? And so that low <clears throat> core count would be really important if I have to have a separate cluster that's licensed for a particular database engine. That's specifically why you're calling out databases for it, I guess. Or operating system or like operating Windows system. 2019, right? Right. Whereas the, the scaled all the way up would deal with some pretty serious compute, both scale out compute like VDI, but also scale up for some uh, fairly intense data processing against the high performance storage you had out of the compute nodes. Correct, correct. So in addition to traditional um, compute nodes that we have, we also have one of uh, uh, one model that comes with the GPU nodes. Those are specifically designed for end user computing. Mm -hmm. uh, so whether you want to run you know, uh, 3D graphics rendering um, or artificial intelligence, you'll be able to to accomplish this on that platform. So you'd be seeing things like oil and gas exploration using those cards or healthcare. scale out high performance um, VDI like healthcare with imaging and, and so on being delivered through VDI. Absolutely. So I think that's that's one of the really interesting things to see is that this isn't just a fixed, really large solution. There's some ridiculously high performance. There's also a scale down option for these nodes as well, that it's that reduces your cost of deployment as well if you're going at the smaller end of the scale. Absolutely. So the whole idea is to, <clears throat> to run physically one cluster, and depending on the workloads that you're trying to deploy, um, uh, you will align the workload to the specific node type. So it could be a database specific or end user uh, computing specific or um, just a traditional general workload. So based on this, the, the workload, you can pick specific specific hardware, minimize, minimize the licensing based on this, 
And the beauty of this is when you run this on the same physical cluster, you take the, uh, you get the benefits of all of the consolidation data reduction um, and, and simplify your day-to-day -day operation. Another thought that strikes me is upgrades, because there are some places where you buy the integrated solutions where you can't simply add additional RAM or um, maybe replace a, a node with a higher performance node. Don't believe that's an issue here. It's upgradable hardware here. We've got empty DIMM slots in the compute no node. Presumably, I'm absolutely welcome to add additional um, DIMMs in there if my workload changes. And of course, I can scale the cluster with additional uh, compute nodes of my own requirement. So, so you, you can definitely scale the cluster with additional um, uh, nodes, whether it's going to be compute or storage. The beauty is not, not only you can scale this up, but you can also shrink this down non-disruptively, right? So um, imagine if you have test and development environment, and if you have the production environment where you're running out of resources, you can very easily eject that node compute or storage and ship it uh, to, the, to the production environment and, um, and add this to the existing cluster in the very short amount of time. So there isn't a, a really strong requirement for a, a uniform cluster that I can have different uh, hardware configurations within my cluster, not all fixed to a single. Yeah, there's no boundaries. The only, the only um, requirement at that point would be to make sure that uh, you're the correct version on the software. So the software would have to align on the, on the node. And, um, and, and there'll, be, there'll be hypervisor constraints as well, but that's not, a, a, not the NetApp HCI platform so much. Correct. So, well, thank you very much, Rafael, for joining me here and running through some of the very interesting and very new hardware that you have for the NetApp HCI solution. And thank you for joining us with this Build Day Live uh, video here at NetApp in Boulder. Join us for more great content as we publish it all out.